<laughs> you know, yes, we are online. Welcome everyone to uh, the Mechanics Chess Social uh, Friday afternoon. My name is Abel Talamantes, Chess Director of the Mechanics Institute, and uh, I have with me uh, Dr. Judith Stare, uh, and she is from Hungary right now. So uh, yes. it, it's uh, it's uh, getting close to the evening over there. And with us uh, today, we have our very special guest, uh, the Bishop himself, uh, Adisa Benjoko. Thanks for uh, joining us. Hey, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You know, anytime Mechanics is doing something, I'm trying to be involved. So. No, no, we love it. And, and you were kind of with us when we did the uh, the San Francisco Scholastic Championship. You came yeah. on for a bit and we had, you know, Sam Shanklin, a lot of other superstars. Heavy uh, hitters. Susan Polgar. I, I, I tremble in their shadow. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, you, were, you were walking among them uh, that day. Yeah, I was just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh so uh i got to meet you uh, a few months back you you actually yes. stopped by the tuesday night marathon uh, yeah. so you got to check out what we were doing over there and we were you know broadcasting the the tournament and we talked to you then but uh you know for the viewers that are getting to know you for the first time or just kind of do a reintroduction you have an extensive history with uh, chess and and working with kids and kind of you know bringing uh, chess to communities that uh, may historically not have had a chess tell us a little bit about that and uh, kind yeah of what you're totally up to. so you know my background is mainly in writing about like hip-hop and rap music and I noticed a pattern where rappers were often talking about chess in ways that the mainstream wasn't talking about. And so um, that went on for many years. And then in 2003, uh, I went to a juvenile hall to teach to teach about journalism. It was like a career day, I was bombing. And uh, to distract the kids, I figured I'd teach them chess because I just bought a chess board for my son. So I was like, oh, how many kids in here play chess? And like 80% of the kids in the juvenile hall knew how to play chess, which bothered me because I wanted to waste time that you know what i'm saying teaching them so then right. i was like all right so i was like all right well, well what if we have a tournament i was like let's have a tournament and we'll see whoever wins i'll give you a book like that's how we'll do it so we set up a tournament the first tournament there are two black kids playing and this white kid is like hey um don't move your knight and the dude's like shut up man i'm doing i know what i'm doing he moves his knight and he loses his queen so then all the kids are like oh the white kid knows how to play chess he's brilliant we gotta you know what i'm saying then later, a kid who was really heavy said he was like 300 pounds. He said he was going to win. And they were like, get out of here. This isn't a sandwich eating contest. But he ended up winning. Right. And when I left, I was like, man, look at all of these kids. Like I saw racial barriers fall. I saw like like identity issues fall. And I was like, all oh, because they knew how to play chess. But I was like, if they play chess, but they make bad life decisions, like what could help? And I started thinking of all the rap lyrics. So I created the Hip Hop Chess Federation to use hip hop as a vehicle to introduce kids to chess. And then I created a separate batch of like life strategies based off observing the game so that people could like make better decisions in their lives so they wouldn't go to juvenile hall. So, you know, I've been doing that for a while. And then in 2014, um, I was invited to teach some of the curatorial staff over at the World Chess Hall of Fame. And we did Living Like Kings, which actually brought more people to the opening day than Bobby Fischer's exhibit brought to the opening day. And that last name drop St. Louis Chess Club, right? Yes. I mean, it was because so <laughs> people awesome. know people know that Chess Hall of Fame, right, they don't right. know how many people They're know right across that. The street. that it's right, almost, right. almost the same. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. They're right across the street. Not almost, is it? <laughs> right. So and, and so that that's actually a big deal. Like I, I cannot stress enough that you got an exhibition there. I think you know that's a huge deal and congratulations because that's basically a testament of your your efforts and and the effort that you're doing here. So. Well, you know, thank you. And you know, it was really a collective effort because if it wasn't for Shannon over there, if it, if it wasn't for Susan who was the director at the time like and their openness to it and if it wasn't if it wasn't for Jennifer Shahadi who introduced me to them it never would have happened so it was this beautiful intercultural moment where like on the first night there were people lined up around the block and you couldn't get in and there were people on Twitter saying this has never happened to me that I couldn't get into the World Chess Hall of Fame and I can't get in and you know RZA from Wu-Tang Clan came out and it was 
this happened all during Ferguson, right? So there was all this racial tension, all this political yeah. tension. And the World Chess Hall of Fame and the St. Louis Chess Club was like this hub, this hub of neutrality where we would all just yeah. play chess, talk about the game we love, talk about the cultural exchanges. And so, you know, um, in 2018, I got invited to do another exhibit at uh, the Oakland Museum Oakland. of California. And that was called Respect, uh, Hip Hop Style and Wisdom. We had a whole section on chess. We had chess boards out there. Um, uh, Jennifer Shahadi came out and did a, did a, did a, did a whole talk. Um, yeah. And it was, just, it was just really powerful. And, we, and no matter what time you would go, uh, to that place, there were always people on the boards, and that brought me like the most joy to see that this connection between hip hop and chess wasn't just like a passing thing, but people were, you know, continuously doing it and and cultivating it. And I think that it's been, um, I mean, from now since 2006, and um, I'm just really grateful. I mean, even to be here now with you guys, it's 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 a big honor, and, and I think it's important. I always remind people how important mechanics is. You know what I mean? Like when you think about chess in America, you think about New York, you think about Boston, you know what I'm saying? But you don't recognize that mechanics is the root of so much of what has happened in American chess. It's and we're, we're close to so much just being in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, the thing about those uh, exhibitions that, that you put on, it's like they weren't chess specific exhibitions. They, they, they fused chess with culture and, and with art. And that's what kind of made it powerful. And, and you probably brought in a lot of people and got a lot of interest from people that may not even be chess enthusiasts, but they were oh, curious about totally. how connected. Yeah, we, we, what we did is I worked with a guy uh, named Mike Realm, R-E-L-M. And what he did is he had uh, like a documentary thing that played hour by hour through the entire exhibit, right? So when you would come in, there was this area to your left. It had two wall-sized... Um, movie screens and it was taking people through the history of hip-hop and then there was this whole situation of of martial arts and chess and it was just so cool because it was like wu-tang clan stuff coming in with kids playing um um chess coming in with people doing jujitsu and it was all like merged it was and bruce lee because bruce lee's from oakland you know what i mean and so there was all this imagery coming in and people really loved it and i think it wasn't just to see the stuff on the screen, it was to be able to like, look at that and go, wow, that was cool. Then you go in the next room and there's chess boards. So, you know, dads are teaching daughters, you know what I'm saying? Grandmas are playing, you know what I'm saying? With their grandsons. And it was just, it was great, man. It was great. So how did it come together? Uh, because, you know, you sort of bring together chess with, uh, uh, you know, like the rap lyrics mm -hmm. and martial arts. And so mm -hmm. like, you know, kind of what stirred within you to sort of fuse all of that together and find that common commonality? Well, you know, it, it, it wasn't intentional. What it was, was I came up in hip hop. I was a journalist, so I was kind of aware of these lyrics. And I was always kind of making a database in my own mind of chess lyrics. So I'd be like, oh, that's Public Enemy. They just said something. Oh, that's EPMD. They just said something. Oh, you know what I mean? And I was I was pulling it together. And then once I started learning jujitsu for myself, once I started working on jujitsu for myself, the way that I could remember the moves was when my instructor, Half Gracie, he would go, you go here, you go here, you go here. And I'd be like, oh, it's like chess, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? That's how I kind of started to remember uh, the moves for myself. And so at a certain point, I was like, whoa, I said, you know, it's like chess is jujitsu for the mind, right? Because it's like a battle. Right. And then jujitsu is chess for the body because you have to be strategic in how you figure out how to win. You know what I mean? And once I kind of started looking into that, I saw other um, jujitsu masters like John Jacques Machado. He has a book on jujitsu and he wrote that jujitsu is like chess, you know, because you, if, if, if I grab your wrist and you, you go to escape, you know, it becomes like a chess match of not just strategy, but timing and understanding of the total position. And because in the 60s and 70s, there were so many Kung Fu films that inspired a lot of the rappers when they were young, when they grew up, like RZA from Wu-Tang Clan and Jizza, they started like sharing this stuff and talking about it more. And it's just been really powerful, really powerful. So you, you had a Gracie as an instructor, huh? Yeah, I, I, um, I started under Half Gracie. He was my first teacher for many years. And then um, his brother, Charles, uh, I studied under him as well right now, you know, back then. And right now I study in San Jose at uh, Heroes Martial Arts with Gumby. 
I know there's a little mixed martial artists that uh, when they talk about what they do and how they think about their fighting, they they'll throw in a chess reference because they're they're trying to think uh, maneuvers and positions ahead and anticipating uh, you know the counters and mm -hmm. thinking beyond that and, and what have you. So. Yeah, you know, you'll find that a lot of top MMA guys uh, and jujitsu practitioners are all chess players. Like it's a, it's a very recommended thing that people and that happened. A lot of the push for that happened after Hip Hop Chess Federation because there were jujitsu guys and MMA guys that were kind of into it, but a lot of them started really seeing it that way. And um, you know, it's um it's a good thing. I think that there's this fusion. Like I think for the average human to be happy, they need to have healthy um, mental and physical ways to express themselves you know what i mean and jujitsu um is is and chess they really complement each other in that way on one of my last podcasts i have a podcast called um bishop chronicles and i had a psychologist named dr elliot gann on and he was talking about hip-hop and the human brain <clears throat> and like what is happening cognitively when a person is making a beat when a person is rapping or when a person is dancing, what's happening in the brain. And it was a fantastic conversation. And when I started asking him about like how chess impacts executive function, you know, which is the part of the brain that is kind of like air traffic control, helps him multitask and stuff like that. He had some amazing things to say about like the value of chess and the value of art. So I think that, you know, because young people are naturally artistic and they're naturally curious and they naturally want to um, express themselves physically, that if you fuse, you know, not all hip hop, there's some hip hop that parents absolutely should not want their kids around, but, you know, not at the, not at the ass, not, not at the expense of the hip hop that is going to elevate their understanding of humanity, that is going to teach them about, you know, the beauty of human culture and stuff like that. So. so kind of like going back to something you said earlier, I remember uh, back when I was uh, uh, coaching and, you know, I had my own, uh, a chess company and I would coach in schools a lot mm -hmm. of times I would do like open houses where mm -hmm. I'd have a school that was interested and you know where I live there's a lot of in, in a lot of areas that are like heavily Latino like in my case right, right. Totally. and uh, I'd go there and to do an open house to sort of introduce chess and I was just like shocked that how many of these kids already knew yeah and yeah. It, and so then I was asking myself if you know if all these kids already know how to play chess like how come I'm not seeing them in tournaments and things like that? And then, it, it, you know, it's kind of dawned that, you know, these kids, you know, don't have the resources to go through uh, after school programs that might guide them to tournaments or pay tournament mm -hmm. entry fees. Uh, but when we did free programs, um, the mm -hmm. composition of the class was like reflected the school. Right. Uh, right but then right, you go, right. but then you go to a, a, you know, a local tournament and you don't have that same makeup of you know kids from these backgrounds um what you know what is it that people are doing in the homes for example because like they're learning chess from somewhere it, mm -hmm. is it just is it just parents teaching them and then you just know, kids is, playing among a, themselves it's an interesting mix part of it in in like we would be remiss to especially when we're talking about like blacks and latino kids in this in the inner city is the role of hip-hop Right. If you look at, you know, Public Enemy went several times platinum, you know, <laughs> Wu Tang Clan several times platinum, you know, Eminem, Drake, all these guys, and they always, Jay Z, they always mention chess somewhere in their songs. And so what's happening is, you know, um, the kids are hearing the lyrics, they want to play, but they don't have like tournament aspirations, right? Because for them, unfortunately, as we know, the streets are dangerous. Right. So the idea is I want to learn chess so that I don't fall victim to somebody else's trick. I want to fall. I, I want to make sure that if I'm going down the street and I see a situation that I can think about what how could this go wrong or how could I make it go right? How could I avoid this obstacle? Right. Because you're dealing with chess. Right. Um, risk assessment. Right. Recovery from loss, like having to deal with less material than you thought, but still figuring out a way to make it happen. Right. That's that's. Yeah. That's poor folks worldwide, right? And things like that. And so hip hop is a large part. What I've also noticed was people are learning sometimes from their older brothers. People are sometimes learning from um, like their grandparents and their parents. But what's, what's also interesting is, um, and it wasn't an official research project, but when I first started hip hop chess, I started asking young 
uh, men and women who were like 20 something, like when did they start learning chess? And what I found was about 50% of them who had learned from a, a, a family member early, right? They just loved the game and they kind of went through their life and they didn't have any problems. However, the ones that didn't learn it that way, they usually ended up learning in juvenile hall or jail after. And so it's very interesting that the ones who seem to have learned the game on their own organically avoided juvenile hall. And then the ones who got it later, usually, I mean, I'm not really sure what their recidivism is, but I was impressed by the fact that if, if people were just learning it and you just start thinking about how things can go wrong or things can go right for you without any philosophy, it helps. No, that's, uh, it, yeah, it's just a fascinating th thing to think about. And actually, one of the really cool things that the U.S. Chess Federation uh, has done recently, Judith and I are working on the clubs committee, is that while their goal in trying to spread chess and mm -hmm. uh, promote chess clubs is to try to get new memberships to the U.S. Chess Federation. Uh, they see the highest importance is just to getting people playing chess and not necessarily having to convert members. And that's always been my thing, right? Because obviously, like I said, like, you know, I'm not Maurice Ashley or a super high level playing person, but my goal is to get them in, know that it's fun, get them to see a value in it. And then depending on where they live, if they live in New York, okay, you can go to Marshall or whatever, right? And if you live here, you can go to mechanics or we, we can point you in the direction of, of, of Jennifer Shahadi or Judith or whoever is going to, you know, help you take your game to a higher level. But the first role, the first goal is just to make the game, teach them the game and let it be fun. After that, everything else is possible. So like, that's how I've always, you know, gone forward. So kind of like trying no, that's, that's to I think that's what I think U.S. chess and some local chess is uh, also realizing that there are so many people who just know how to play chess. They love playing chess, but they have no interest in going to the tournaments because it's it's not their style. They are not playing chess to go to tournaments. They're mm -hmm. playing chess to enjoy the game, to connect with their friends, with their peers, with their uh, whoever and then it's it's uh, we have to pay more attention to that uh, group because there are so many players and they are so-called sleeping uh, players yeah 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 sleeping exactly chess players but it's 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 you know it's i don't i hate calling that that because they are not sleeping they are just right. not interested but they're just not yeah they're just not full yeah and, and it's interesting exactly like one of the things that i noticed and i would talk to jennifer shahari about this and i'm sure you've seen it too is like sometimes there are girls who are amazing and then they quit playing because maybe like, like I knew this one girl who was amazing chess player, but she, once she was able to beat her boyfriend consistently, then he got upset with her and then she stopped playing. Yeah. And I was like, no, I was like, keep playing, find a better guy who does play chess. Like that's yeah. the guy that you want. That's a whole other way. It's frustrating when the girls, quit, the girls right? quit, yeah, exactly. You know, and so it's like, you know, yeah. um, so as long as we can just keep them playing and yeah. keep them excited and feeling like, you know, they're getting some type of value for it, yeah. we can hopefully get them, you know, yeah. to, to, to these tournaments. But I think, um, you know, this kind of uh, outreach is important. I think it's really timely. And I think that um, as, you know, hopefully assuming like, you know, Dan Lucas and everybody over at US Chess and Mechanics and, you know, Jennifer and everybody at St. Louis, as long as we do our part, I think that we're gonna find some fantastic gems, you know what I mean? In, in communities that we weren't as close to before. And I'm looking really forward to that. I think we're gonna find some dynamic girls, some very dynamic young men, and I think that we're all going to be happy with um, this resurgence of chess um, in America and the world, especially because of COVID. It's like a weird thing, but because everybody's jumping online, right, because they can't get out, I think we have a great opportunity to create a lot of uh, cross-cultural unity, right, to, to create a higher, a higher level of respect for um, minds that were not particularly being celebrated, you know what I mean? And, and the genius and so many amazing uh, young girls around the world and here in the country and, you know, young boys and, and just, man, I think it's a good time. And, and, I, I would, yeah, and it's, it's, it's just to focus on 
whoever is your opponent. It doesn't matter, right? Yeah. You focus on your game and wh what the opponent is playing. It doesn't matter who is who is sitting next to the board, right? It's so, the totally. game is is uniting. Um, I I always love. <laughs> no, it is. It is. I think that. Um, the good thing about when you play chess, and this is how it's like jujitsu, like if you go to a jujitsu school, like one guy is an attorney, th this lady is a coder, that guy's a carpenter, you know, she runs a, a fashion store. And it's like chess is the same way. You never know who's sitting across from you. And what it does is because you keep playing with so many different people, it helps you have a high level of respect for everybody. Right, like you don't know what their religion is. You may not speak the same language. You may whatever, but you walk away with a high level of respect. And from that place of respect, everything else becomes possible. Right, and exactly. that's why I really love chess. And you know, you know one of the things we've seen from some of our students that have gone through our uh, scholastic programs is we've had them where they've gone to other countries, and the parents will send us a picture of them playing chess in that <laughs> other country. Mm -hmm. And it, it just kind of like brings to mind sort of what we're talking about that one of the unique, really cool things about chess is it, it's something you can engage w with somebody else from a completely different culture, from a completely different country and language. And, and you sit down and you play and you're speaking the same language when you're engaged in playing. So I think chess has kind of a unique ability and, and maybe a responsibility in terms of using chess as a tool to see how we can bring people together. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think that is that is that is where it's at. You know, um, I did an interview. Also, the I Go ahead. And also, I think it teaches kids how to communicate, right? Because the, the other thing is what I find is, uh, I mean, there are cultural differences, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, especially different countries, mm -hmm. um, but within one country too. Uh, but chess makes it, it teaches kids how to communicate, how to respect each other, and how to effectively uh, I can say I can say you know, effectively communicate yeah. your position and your opponents and res uh, show respect and and come to a conclusion that hopefully hopefully better the world. Right? Yeah, no, I th I think that's that's where everything should be headed. That's that's what the timing is right now, and I can't think of a better game than chess for our for our global citizens to to take a chance to engage in you know like what do, what do you think is sort of the next step i mean if, if we didn't have covid right now i would be mm -hmm. asking all right what's the next step you know for us because you know we, we really want to one of the goals that we have at mechanics is we really want to make an, an impact in our local immediate community right, right. Um, and, and engaging those communities, which of, of which there are many in San Francisco, right, and, right, right. And Oakland and, you know, Hayward and surrounding areas, um, you know, reach out to them and, and kind of like more on the local level. So, you know, sort of getting a little bit away from, you know, kind of the national level that you know we love to right. jump into as well. But kind of making it more local and kind of engaging communities that are not thinking about tournaments right, right off the bat. Like, but now with COVID, you know, we're doing a lot of online stuff. So it kind of creates a bigger challenge in terms of engaging new people. Right. Like, how do you find them now? Right. right. Like, what, what do you think of that? Like, you know, what? it's it's a mixed it's a it's a mixed. That is a tough question. I'm gonna have to think about that. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not easy yeah. because my first answer thinking of my pre-COVID mind was one of the things that we used to do at HHCF, like if we knew that they had a thing called Hyro Day, which was a big outdoor music festival in Oakland, right? And we would just go set up a booth because they would give us a booth for free. And we would just set up tables and just back up. The music's already there. Oh, can we just play? Yeah, it's a free game. Like, you know, we're not charging. Go ahead and play. And people would be lined up to play. It was unbelievable. I never thought like there would be like we had four boards and there were like 20 people in each line just waiting for their pair to go up, you know? And so again, getting it back to the fun now online, that becomes harder, right? Cause where can you go online to find where these people are and kind of sprinkle this opportunity to play chess for free. But I think that little by little, um, again, in, in urban communities and in, in large part because of hip hop. And I think also just because, um, 
of course people like the traditional gaming but but you know i think chess for a lot of people is just a family tradition you know like my dad taught me chess when i was like five you know what i mean just because he thought it was fun and you know we kept playing i taught it to my son and my daughters and so i think um in a in a post covid time it's very strange but i think that maybe when we come out like when the reopening is official and whatever that means you know because things are so uncertain i think going forward if we can just um if if wherever you are in the world if there's a chess club take your chess to the people you hope to impact right don't assume that oh oh there's mechanics i didn't know and they're going to come by right go somewhere you know into your city right uh to an outdoor festival just put some boards out and just let people play and then the organic thing will happen i actually had a co-worker one time where i was saying you know i was walking down the street heading back to the caltrain station um mm -hmm. and i was passing by a pete's and mm -hmm. i saw someone there at the one of the tables do like with the board set up like ready to go yeah and and i said i, I thought that was pretty cool and then uh, she goes, did you stop and play them? And then I said, oh, no, because I was going, you know. But then, <laughs> right. then it made me think, you know, it's just like little things like that. Because, you know, here's someone that's like looking to engage, right, and socialize. Right. And, right. you know, we, we have to recognize those opportunities, right, to, to engage. And, and uh, you know, and, and maybe that's kind of like our responsibility to learn to recognize opportunities to connect with someone through yeah, chess. You know what I mean? And so like, I remember in, in Fremont there were, I don't know if it's still around just cause COVID, but there was a Starbucks on the, oh man, it was, it was right by the luckies. It was right by the luckies. I know exactly how to go there. Not the drive through. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. It was like, it was right next to the luckies. I mean, there was a luckies and a Starbucks. And there was like a group of like 10 Persian old dudes that would always be there playing chess. And they were all like assassins. I would show up and I would like try to play them and they would demolish me super fast. But it was always hilarious. And we always had like so much fun and then other people would play. And like, I mean, like, that's the stuff, you know what I mean? Like that's, you know, those those moments were golden for my head and golden for my heart. I remember that all the time. And so it's like, I think it's like, how can we it would be great if we could find those guys and say hey why don't you come up to mechanics one day you know what i mean and 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 like i know like in oakland around lake Merritt, um um in the piedmont area there there's i think in one of the starbucks over there there's a lot of african-american older dudes that play mm -hmm. you know what i mean yep. so i think we kind of have to go all of the chess clubs nationally you're going to have to think about where are people playing chess anyway and then right. that bite them you know, to an open house at our like, spot. Like not about rated chess. Cause right, I, cause, but it's cause, complex. Because I actually yeah. know, I mean, there's a lot of people, you know, uh, I don't know if you know Juan Sendejas, who does a lot for mechanics. Yes, he, yes. He's, 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 he's one of us. And yeah. uh, I mean, he's got friends and he knows communities where they meet up at, you know, like, you know, a coffee shop and mm -hmm. here on this day or, you know, at, at this other place on this day. And, you know, these are all strong players and, and, yeah. and none of them play, you know, tournaments. They just come out and play chess and love it. And, you know, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. So a couple years ago, there was a big hip hop tour called Rock the Bells. And one time RZA was like, yo, I got you guys a booth. Just come bring some boards that people play. People played at that festival all day. So at some point I was like, okay, let's do a tournament. Cause we were like, was there a tournament? Is there a tournament? Is there a tournament? And I hadn't realized, I was like, huh? So then I was like, okay, yeah, we're gonna do a tournament. So then this one guy, a Samoan dude from South Central Los Angeles, he signs up for the tournament, but he was on tour with someone. Like, I think he was like a security guard or something. So he was like, I gotta go back, but like, I'll come back and play. So meanwhile, the dude who won was a classically trained dude who actually worked ironically for the treasury department white dude chilling had a great time won as soon as he wins the the dude from south central shows up and he's like hey so what time's the tournament i'm like dude it's over bro like you know and he was like what and he goes off he knew he was just mad at the situation he wasn't mad at me but then he looked at the he looked at the guy from the treasury department he was like hey he was like can I play you anyway, even though I'm late? And he's like, he's like, and if, if you win, you win. And if I win, like, like I win. And I was like, Ooh, this has gotten high stakes. Or like so, for the title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, and the dude from the treasure problem was like, yeah, 
So they played and the South Central guy won. Um, everybody was like, oh, like there was this crazy crowd yeah. and it was just beautiful. But the guy, the guy from the treasury department didn't care. He was so happy to just be at the tournament, to have fun, you know, and like, I just got pictures of them. And yeah, it was just great. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, the way we did it was the guy that did the, did the tournament, he kept his title but we gave a prize to the guy that came sure. yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So, you know, and I mean like, but it was totally, you know, race, class, all that stuff went away. And it was about, you know, the board rewards you for your best ideas. And, and, and who doesn't want to live in a world where we get blessed for our best ideas and nothing else matters? Like, just Actually, that place. actually that's, that's a great thing to say. So, what do you got going right now? Like, do you have uh, working on any projects, any plans? Yeah. So, or the top mm -hmm. secret, or yeah. <laughs> I'm always up to something. Um, I am working. Okay. So the big thing was normally during the summer, uh, I'll be in the juvenile halls over in Oakland doing stuff. But because of COVID, I don't really know what's going to happen with that. So in the meantime, I've been putting together an idea for an event. Um, and I have some, possibly some events that we're going to do locally and possibly some international events. So I'm just kind of waiting on the dust to settle because we all need to see what happens with COVID. Sure. We always need to see, it's hard to make you know, plans. Yeah. yeah. We always need to see what's next, but I can assure you that, um, I'm going to be trying to roll some stuff out and you guys will be the first to know about it, you know? Um, locally to to um, supercharge um, the 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 community the the like we'll just we got to find a word Judith for the non tournament playing chess community that exists we need to find a term yes there's because a, I hate sleeping players there's, 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 there's a lot of power in language right so yeah if we, no, find, like, the we right word. find that word but the I guess the whole thing is that. I've been calling them casual players, right? Just casual players. But my whole yes. mix has been kind of over the years to kind of galvanize casual players. Plus you those casual I mean? players are among the most passionate. Right? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> but I think that, you know, we're, we're going to do something cool. And, and again, my, my, I've always seen it as my job to not have people look at hip hop chess or Disa, but for me to point to you, you know what I mean? Cause that's where the games are going to get elevated. That's where, the history and the culture is going to be taught, you know what I mean, on, on, a, on, a, on a refined level. So as soon as I have this stuff figured out, like you will absolutely, uh, you know, you, you'll be at the top of that list and, and, and knowing what's up. Well, anything you have going on that we can help support, you know, just let us know, obviously. Yeah. And I think, you know, kind of one of the, the tasks for us to keep thinking about is, you know, promoting chess, you know, I mean, we, we promote chess, you know, on right, the right. tournament level, the national state, you know, all this, right. but, but also being conscious that there, there's so many passionate players out there that, um, they're not looking to play the tournaments. They're not looking for the rating. They just want to play chess as a, a joy yeah. in itself and to connect and socialize with others. And that actually has great value because that kind of chess actually has the potential to be more impactful on a community than it. I fully agree. No, no, no. I fully agree. And I think like, cause when I started thinking about myself, like, you know, when you talk to, you know, again, these casual players for right now, like about why they like chess, what do they remember? They remember the big game against their, against their cousin, you know, at the family barbecue, they remember. And I think that's how chess culture actually spreads. Like not to say anything that, you know, when, you know, Magnus plays, you know, Anna, that that doesn't matter. But I'm saying like in most of the world, right? It's like one of my friends was was telling me how <laughs> when he was little, his mom used to kill him in chess and it would make him cry forever. But he would never stop playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so like he, he, you know, he always laughs and his mom was laughing about like how he would cry after games. But like that's the funny history that happens. You know what I mean? When the father beats the son, when the son beats the father, when, when, the, when the daughter beats grandpa like those those are the things that keep i think chess going on a cultural level globally and so i think that um my hope and i mean we we're talking about this before we started rolling but like hopefully you guys 
the online uptick that that chess has had will spill over into the casual play in public right and then if we can regalvanize those masses and bring them into mechanics bring them into marshall bring them into you know what i mean the beverly hills chess club we can see a cultural uh not just a cultural shift but just like um a more full representation of the body of chess players that actually are already here actually you bring up an important point just because you know we're people are not playing you know uh, unless they're in the same family, they're not playing, you know, against each other. The importance of recognizing that, I think, when you know, when things kind of reopen and people are getting back, that you know, there's a chance for that to sort of get lost. The you know, or, or people being too afraid to kind of engage with others, and, and you know, and, and losing the folklore of people playing chess and then telling that story to others and you know, passing it down. So. Um, yeah, I mean, and this is interesting because these are all ideas, you know, don't really think about all the time. And it's kind of nice mm-hmm. that we're bringing them up now through this. No, it's, I also it, like your idea of, of uh, bringing chess to like a park. I know New York has the chess in the parks, right. which attracts uh, annually hundreds of kids. And that's maybe something something that we should work on together to to uh, for for your foundation to, yeah. to organize something, and then we can provide we can be there, have a table, and and, and be there and kind of organize something, because I think that's um, that exposes um, chess to a lot of um, kids locally, right? Maybe no, it does, and you know, you guys may know more about it on a city level, but there wasn't area around fifth and market that used to have a lot of like street players yes and then a bunch of politics happened and they kind of got cleared out and then it was very interesting because there was a a city council person who i was speaking to and they were like yo because i said look that's not okay if like if you're going to get rid of that what are you going to give you know what i mean and they're like oh we're going to do all this stuff and of course it never happened there was actually a documentary uh made about that the street chess it was called street games uh-huh. Oh, and if you, if you look it. on uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime, it's there. It's, okay. It's interesting. It's about that, uh, the street that chess on Market Street. Yeah, man. Because like what I wanted to do and what I'd love to do is maybe see if we can talk to Mayor London Breed and say, okay, look, you know, like, let's make a full, determined, well-invested movement into into cultivating chess culture here in the bay just based off of what mechanics has done just based off of what i have done if we've got like you know street chess stuff from adisa or more casual chess stuff plus mechanics and we do stuff with the city i, I it would be a hard belief for me that that couldn't be impactful and, and couldn't be made into something lasting I, I just did a put up a facebook post the other day where it showed the chess board right in front of city hall so i we, saw it it's so cool so we know uh we know they're aware of chess over there <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, and and so and plus, I think you know because we're so close to the Silicon Valley, and obviously, you know, San Francisco has its own kind of uh, uh, tech community. That that I think that you know, I my personal theory is that kids who can play chess can and should be guided into the tech community. You know what I mean? That it the the the, the local technology community is is missing a lot when it doesn't seek to engage the local youth especially those that already show an adaption and and, uh, and, you know uh, for um um, for chess that kind of things that relate to it you know so this uh any any final thoughts before we wrap um, anything you want to plug man, anything you want to <laughs> i just want to say you know thank you so much um i just actually uh our our new podcast that's up now we have a guy named david frazy esquire he's a venture capitalist guy from silicon valley and um i met him through chess you know what i mean i met him through chess he's a he's a big like if you go to his house like he's got an extensive library right and like so many chess books so many chess puzzles you know what i mean and so he's a venture capitalist and he's talking about you know um what america can do right now to enrich the economy through you know startup tech entrepreneurship it's a very cool conversation you know so um and every show every show on bishop chronicles i have a section where i talk about chess and life like every show so like you know no matter what you see in the topic there's always going to be a chess and life component so 
please check out Bishop Chronicles and thank you guys. And like I said, uh, I'm scheming on something, but as soon as I put it all together, I, I'll come out and, 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 and we'll do something. And, sure and, we, and, and we'll, ha- we'll help you promote. Uh, cool. Absolutely. For sure. Cool. Adisa Banjoko, thank you for joining us on Friday yeah. on the Mechanics Chess Social. And then uh, we will put this up on uh, YouTube for viewing. And uh, just uh, and we encourage you. everyone to check out your podcast. It's always very fun. So <laughs> Bishop cool. Chronicles. bookmark the link and, <laughs> and listen to the podcast. And actually, right. and, and I'll include it in the newsletter when we do a write up about this. Okay. So excellent. Thank you All so right. much. Thank All you right. so much for joining Take care. us. Have a you blessed too. Wonderful. And thank you everyone for watching us. Yeah. Bye, everyone. We will see you next Bye. week. Bye.